So the interest rate guarantee, I'm going to explain with two scenarios, okay? Scenario one and scenario two. So there's a guaranteed agreed rate, let's say um, 5%, 5%. Then in the first scenario, in the future, or the reference interest rate now becomes 12%. And in the second scenario, it drops and it becomes 3%. Here, the customer is going to exercise the option, obviously. And here, the customer will not exercise the option. I mean, this is the rational thing to do, right? Because as the customer, now anytime you are calculating anything in interest rates or edging, you always have to look at it from the point of view of the customer. There's nothing that concerns you with the bank, okay? So anytime the bank is losing, the customer is gaining. Anytime the bank is gaining, the customer is losing, right? So if the customer agrees to 5%, I want to take my loan at 5%, but in the future, it increases to 12%, okay? This difference of 7% is to be borne by the bank, okay? And obviously, the customer will exercise his option because it can see that interest rate has risen. And that's the flexibility that comes with the second method, the interest rate guarantee, unlike FRA. In FRA, whether it's falling or it is increasing, you must exercise the option because it's an agreement. So there will either be compensation from the bank or compensation from the customer. So normally, if it was the former method, there should be a compensation from the customer here, right? Of 2% because the rate has fallen to 3%. But here, the customer can decide what to not exercise the option. Okay, that's the difference, the flexibility. Now, the payment for that flexibility to exercise your option or not exercise your option is what we call premium, right? It's like you are paying for the services of the bank. Because if the bank is covering this 7%, you must have paid a premium. Okay, that's the difference. So the interest rate guarantee method thrives on the weaknesses or on the limitations of the FRA, of the forward rate agreement method. So let us read this question as you have on the screen. It says Abdurrahman Limited has entered into a commitment. Abdurrahman Limited has entered into a commitment to borrow 10 million in three months' time for a period of three months. Okay. The bank has offered an IRG, that is an interest rate guarantee, at 6% per annum for a premium of 0.075% of the loan capital. They said calculate the effect. If the market rate in three months is 7% per annum and B, 4% per annum, okay? So let's do that. The first one you said is what? If the market rate, that is if the um, reference interest rate in three months time, if the future rate now happens to be 7%, right? As compared to what they agreed, the IRI, IRG, IRG is what? 6%. You can see that there's a difference of what? 1%. The customer will pay interest. You know, in the former method, I said the customer will pay interest at that future rate, okay? Then there will be a compensation. So this one, because it's a guarantee, you must pay interest at that 6%, right? So that's 6% multiplied by what's the loan amount? $10 million, right? $10 million. Are we prorating? Is it one year? No. Because I said in three months time, for a period of three months. So we prorate to what? Three months over 12 months. So that will give you $150,000, right? So that's the interest rate. Then there's a premium. The customer has also paid premium. Premium of how much? They said the premium is 0.075%. Premium is like the cost of exercising the option. So far you've entered into an option agreement, that is you are paying for that flexibility you have. Does it make sense? 0.075% multiplied by $10 million, right? This one you're not prorating because he said it's, a, it's like a cost. You know, interest rate is annually. So this premium is just a charge. It's a one-off expense. So you're not prorating. And they specifically said it here that at a premium of 0.075 of the loan capital. Okay, so you just put it like that. So you have 7,500. You know, this is not lessons. It's an extra cost. So when you add it together, you have 157,500. So you get the effective interest rate to be what? 157,500. Divided by 10 million, multiplied by 100%, multiplied by 12 over 3. You need know, to take it back to annual rate, okay? So put that in your calculator. 157,500 divided by 10 million times 100%, multiplied by 12, divided by 3. And that will give you 6.3%. Can you see that? So you have your effective interest rate to be 6.3%. In case we are trying to calculate it directly from here, 6% plus like what i was showing you in that previous place right you know this one is not going to give you um three percent because this one is not prorated like this if you try to prorate this rate 0 0.075 multiplied by 12 divided by 3. 0 0.075 multiplied by 12 divided by 3. can you see 
you get that 0 0.3 this 0 0.3 percent attached to this do you understand that's why i don't support you adding it from here directly because it's not every time that you prorate you can see you didn't prorate here you only multiplied by 10 million here you multiply by 10 million and you prorated so you are now taking it's better to get the actual amount being paid and now you need to get your eir effective interest rate by putting it on the total loan amount and now getting the effective interest rate do you understand so look at how i changed this one to 0 0.3 percent because it did not go through it earlier does it make sense so you don't actually have to bother yourself with this this is the answer this is what they asked you to solve um so after this question okay there's a big part it said calculate the effective interest rate if market rate in three months is four percent per annum okay so if it has now in, um, reduced to four percent per annum you can see that the difference between four and six is what two right and it's not favorable this one is not favorable two percent is an option so the rational thing for the guy to do that's abdurrahman is to not exercise the option because you agreed you guaranteed six percent but now you can see four percent right you can't change you can't change what you have guaranteed you only have the option to take it or you don't take it you understand you have the option to choose between this or this so the financial implication that is the actualization of the loan now will be that you pay what is lower now four percent because he has the option on what to choose four percent of the loan amount or the loan amount ten million dollars multiplied by it for rate six over twelve is it six over twelve three over twelve is three months loan right then the premium 0 0.075 percent multiplied by 10 million so put this in your calculator what will you have that will give you hundred thousand hundred thousand dollars then the premium that will give you seven five so that will give one round seven five hundred right so what are you going to do the effective interest rate is you already know that it's 4.3 percent from this right you know it's because of that thing we've done so you have 107 500 divided by 10 million multiplied by 100 percent that's the rate but it's a um three months rate so you take it back to annual 12 over 3 okay and that will give you 4.3 percent um let's go to the third method so the third method is the interest rate swap this one two companies are swapping that is two debtors are swapping so let me take another marker and do that interest rate swap irs that's method three okay so um in this method the bank will look for two debtors and probably they need a particular type of interest you know i said it earlier that companies can take interest as fixed interest rates or flexible that's floating variable right 